Welcome back to Jason Bowman Loves Cars. Today I'm going to tell you my story of the SN95 Mustang GT. The SN95 is another one of those cars that all my friends either have or had over the years. I almost bought one myself. My friends Jamie and Steve had 1995s. When I went to buy one it was 1996. After finding out the legendary 5 liter HO was no longer available and the 4.6 liter was the only option, I got spooked. Denied. The word on the street was the 4.6 liter was an untutable slug. Those people were of course very wrong. But I didn't know any better. I decided to put my money into a new 5 liter HO engine for my Mustang 2 instead. Between my weekend car Mustang 2 5 liter HO and my Lincoln Mark 7 5 liter HO daily driver, I got my 5 liter HO fix. Fast forward to 2021 and these cars have become very affordable and deserve a second look. Please remember to like, subscribe, and comment. SN95 concepts were narrowed down to three contenders. The first was a very Taurus looking concept Ford called, no joke, Bruce Jenner. It was rejected for being too tame. Bruce Jenner became more, um, exciting post-1990. The second concept was codenamed Rambo. It was extremely aggressive looking, although Rambo and the middle ground design Arnold Schwarzenegger were- It's not a Tuma. It's not a Tuma at all. Both equally accepted in consumer clinics, Ford chose the safe middle ground. The concept styling changed little to the actual production car. Before the SN95 Mustang's launch, a two-seater show car designed by Daryl Blalala and Bud Blalala, the show car was called the Mustang Mach 3. The Mach 3 was first shown at the 1993 North American International Auto Show in Detroit. Many of the show car's retro styling cues ended up on the production SN95. The fourth generation Ford Mustang was produced from 1994 through 2004. The 1994 Mustang was the first major redesign in 15 years. The car's underpinnings were based on the Fox platform. The Fox platform has been used on many cars. The 1994 Mustang was codenamed SN95 within Ford. A fastback coupe consolidated the 1979 to 1993 coupe and hatchback body styles. The SN95 was also available in a convertible. Ford spent $700 million improving the Fox platform for the 1994 Mustang. Vehicle dynamics and braking were improved while noise, vibration, and harshness NHV, were greatly reduced over the previous Mustang. The Mustang's front suspension still used McPherson struts, but with longer, lower control arms, new spindles, anti-roll bars, and larger front brakes. The rear suspension was still the traditional four-bar link and solid axle. All 1994 Mustangs received standard four-wheel disc brakes. Previously, the LX and the GT had rear drums. Anti-lock brakes, ABS, were optional. The 1994 Mustang also received new interior styling. The dual cockpit was reminiscent of 60s Mustangs. The 1994 Mustang option list was long. The preferred equipment package came with power windows, mirrors, and door locks, remote keyless entry, air conditioning, cruise control, and a trunk cargo net. The Mach 460 230 watt multi speaker sound system with CD player was also an option. All 1994 Mustangs received front airbags. The styling did not change from 1994 to 1998, save for the taillights. 94 and 95 had vertical slotted taillights, and the 96 to 98 had a more traditional Mustang style three horizontal slots. The SN95 was given a major facelift in 1999. The New Edge Mustang was unofficially called the SN99. The roof, interior, and basic platform remained the same, but all the curves were straightened following Ford's new design language. The SN95 Mustangs were built in the Dearborn Assembly Plant in Michigan. The SN95 was well received by the public and the media. The 1994 Mustang won Motor Trend's coveted Car of the Year. The truth in advertising was refreshing, proclaiming, it is what it was, and more.
introducing the all-new Ford Mustang. It is what it was. And more. The edgy SN99 had a very light-hearted, fun NASCAR-themed commercial. Right. 99 Ford Mustang. <laughs> rusty, we've got one for you. Hey, aren't you Rusty? Wallace, hit it. The new Ford Mustang moves even faster with 2.9 financing. Parallel parking? Check. 1,562,529 fourth generation Mustangs left American showrooms. Engines. The 1994 and 1995 Mustang GT had the legendary overhead valve 5 liter HO with 215 horsepower at 4200 RPM and 285 foot pounds of torque. The 1996 to 2004 Mustang GTs had 4.6 modular single overhead cam V8s. The 4.6 liter engines were produced in two different plants, Windsor and Romeo. The two engines differ slightly. Valve cover bolt patterns, front cover bolt sizing, and the Windsor used dowel pins on the main caps, and the Romeo used jack screws. The new engine produced 215 horsepower at 4400 RPM and 285 foot pounds of torque at 3500 RPM. 1998 4.6s got a small bump in power to 225 horsepower at 4750 RPM and 290 foot pounds of torque at 3500 RPM. The bump in power was the result of computer tuning. The bump and power was a result of computer tuning and a modified fuel system. New PI, Performance Improved Cylinder Heads, arrived in 1999. The new heads bumped the power to 260 horsepower and increased the torque to 302 foot-pounds. Transmissions 94 and 95 GTs used world-class T5 5-speed manual transmissions. 1996 to 1999 GTs used T45 5-speed manual transmissions. 01 to 04 GTs used the TR3650 5-speed manual transmission. 94 and 95 GTs used the AOD E 4-speed automatic transmission. 96 to 04 GTs used the 4R70W 4-speed automatic transmission. Rear axle. All SN95 GTs had the 8.8-inch solid rear axle. Brakes. SN95 GTs used 10.9 vented front rotors and 10.5 inch rear rotors. Pre-1999 cars have single piston front calipers. 1999 and up cars have two piston front calipers. All SN95 GTs had single piston rear calipers. ABS is an internet mystery, but it was at least an option, if not standard equipment, depending on the year. Traction control also appeared in 1999. Suspension. The steering and suspension dated back to 1979, quadrishock rear end included, but a strategic number of changes were made. A stiffer structure allowed for slightly softer spring rates and softer shock calibrations. These key changes all worked together to provide a nicer ride. A repositioned front suspension crossmember and longer lower control arms improved geometry and increased the wheelbase by three quarters of an inch. The alignment settings were dialed in for better directional stability. The front caster was dialed from 1.5 to 4 degrees and tracks were widened at each end by 1.9 inches. To save weight, roll bars went from solid to totally tubular with larger front and rear diameters. The front bar was increased to 30 millimeters and the rear to 24 millimeters. Aerodynamics. The SN95 got a faster 60 degree windshield angle which helped reduce drag coefficients to 0.36. For comparison, the drag coefficient of the Fox LX Coupe was 0.40. The Fox GT hatchbacks range from 0.36 to 0.39. Wheels. The 1994 and 1998 Mustang GT came with 16-inch wheels with optional 17-inch wheels. 17-inch wheels became standard in 1999. Stock performance. Motor Week recorded a 0 to 60 time of 6.8, a quarter mile time of 15.6 at 90 miles per hour for the 1995 Mustang GT. Car and driver tested the 1999 GT 0-60 and 5.5, but inexplicably did not record the quarter mile time. 0-60times.com came to the rescue with a recorded 14 seconds flat for the Mustang GT. If you're curious, and I know I was, 0-60times listed the 1999 Camaro Z28 running 0-60 miles per hour and 5.2 with no quarter mile time listed. The 2000 Camaro Z28 SS was listed at running the same 0 to 60 time in 5.2 seconds and a quarter mile time of 13.5. Aftermarket performance. It is a Mustang, so the aftermarket support is limitless for either the 5 liter HO or the 4.6 modular. 
Cold air intakes, headers, cam cams, cylinder heads, stroker kits, blowers, turbo kits are all available. Handling hardware is in the same boat. Lowering springs, coilovers, stronger control arms, chassis stiffening devices, out the wazoo. <laughs> That was a close race. Crap. I can't make my Gapplebee's joke. Racing. SN95s make great drift cars. SN95s do well at spectator days. I don't have a thrill of one, but we don't so much today in the New Hampshire. We got us a side-by-side -side battle this time. Door to door through turn two. Down the back through. Right, lay a blank in the Right side by side. Bring the little one on the outside, bring it on the inside. They also make great road racers. Crossing comes naturally. Oddly, more than one YouTuber rally crosses theirs. Perhaps the best use of an SN95 is to get together with like-minded Mustangers on a nice sunny day and go for a cruise. Wait, what was that? Holy crap, another jackalope sighting! Run. Buying an SN95 Mustang. There are a few things to look out for when buying one of these cars. 94, 95, 5 liters have clutch cables that are a wear item that may need to be replaced. The aftermarket makes higher quality clutch cables in quadrants. Early 4.6 liter GTs have a plastic intake manifold that tends to crack. Thankfully, the aftermarket has came to the rescue on this item too. Idle air control motors are a common failure point. Commonly, the heater vents get stuck on defrost. The vent selector is vacuum operated. The plastic vacuum line tends to get brittle with age and can break. Replacing the plastic line with rubber vacuum line fixes the issues. The oil filter housings on 4.6 liters tend to spring leaks, but the fix is an inexpensive O-ring kit. The Tin Worm loves these cars. The front strut towers are a known rust area. The SN95 and the SN99 unfortunately inherited the Fox's worst rust issue, which is the front frame rails. The trunk floor where it meets the tail panel and the trunk drip rail are also vulnerable to rust. Haggerty claims the average value of a 1995 Mustang GT to be $8,300. These cars are an absolute bargain. It's hard to say where SN95 and SN99 values are headed. They have appeared to have flatlined. If the Fox Body Mustangs are any indication, they will likely rise in value in the next 10 years. If the Mustang 2 is any indication, it may take 45 years before they finally become truly collectible. For now, the SN95's greatness is a well-kept secret, so go out and buy one and enjoy it when the... For now, the SN95's greatness is a well-kept secret, so go out and buy and enjoy one today. Holy f That was hard to say. Thanks for watching my story of the SN95 Mustang GT. I hope you enjoyed it.